Brazilian educator and philosopher Paulo Freire, born in 1921, has been considered by many to be a pioneer of liberation theology, primarily for its philosophy grounded in social justice and cemented by the establishment of his well-received work, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Freire's theology and philosophy was very much shaped by his background and early experiences interacting with poor kids and hence he advocates for and is unapologetically on the side of the disenfranchised in society. In his work, he focuses on an overarching theme of liberation from oppression by dismantling systems of oppression and negative cognitions, perspectives, and behaviors that can vitalize oppression. He views dehumanization as a direct byproduct of oppression and explains that, quote, dehumanization is a distortion of the ovation of becoming more fully human, end quote. This perspective greatly parallels the ideology of liberation theology that became popularized in the 60s with the Civil Rights Movement. And very similar to this movement, Freire believed that the task of liberation is essentially the duty of the oppressed, but that liberation is twofold that there should be one, an objective change in how society works, as well as two, a subjective change in how people perceive the world. Both are necessary because Freire sees the relationship between people and the world as being interconnected. Therefore, his proposed pedagogy for the oppressed is to, quote, realize the ways that they are oppressed, end quote, as a means of encouraging action to promote justice. This is manifested via what he labels as praxis, which is a reflection plus action, and both working in unity are pivotal because it ultimately raises critical consciousness, and more importantly challenges the false narratives that the oppressor has created of the oppressed, which he collectively terms self-depreciation. I also found Freire's philosophy, particularly his stance on praxis and dialogue as a catalyst for social change to have relevance to my own personal background. I personally identify as an African-American queer Christian male. Historically, these identities have substantially been a target for discrimination in society, despite the progress that has been made. While it is hard many times to simultaneously own, acknowledge, and remain true to all of these identities, what becomes even more problematic is when horizontal violence occurs within these identity groups that I belong to on top of the societal rejection and pressures that persist. Christianity, particularly the black Christian church, has historically denounced homosexuality and in a plethora of ways rejects members of the LGBTQ plus community as influenced by traditional, literal, biblical, hermeneutics perspectives. This of course encourages hate as opposed to love, which in and of itself contradicts what Christian theology stands upon. And these perspectives inevitably perpetuate the oppressor-oppressed dichotomy that Freire expounds upon in his work. And there becomes a double rejection from members of the black LGBTQ community. I think what is most important and applicable is more healthy dialogue and reflection within groups that targets dismantling negative or even in some cases false perceptions that have persisted throughout history. And then, even beyond that point, action that involves community building amongst these groups, either within the church or within the community, that inspires tolerance, unity, and ultimately change. The last theory I would like to talk about is Freire's critique of what he labels the, quote, banking approach to education, and how it relates to my projected direction and growth as a social worker. In his work, Freire criticizes more conventional approaches to education in which the teacher is viewed as the ultimate source of knowledge, depositing their said knowledge into the student who only acts as a recipient. Hence, their education and knowledge is heavily shaped by what the teacher has sold into them, denying them the opportunity to inquire and challenge what they are taught. Conversely, Freire advocates for a problem-posing pedagogy that encourages active communication and dialogue amongst both the student and the teacher, which ultimately fosters freedom and knowledge. Freire's problem-posing pedagogy is very much applicable to my role as a social worker. In my practice, I hope to focus on educational social work, working with minority and disenfranchised populations in particular. I also hope to work with students with mental health disorders, such as persons with ADHD, learning disabilities, and conduct-slash-oppositional defiance disorder 
in hopes of implementing psychological and sociological interventions. I believe that it is important to, as I plan to work with these various populations, to remember to foster a space of active reflection and understanding that allows the client the ability to share their experiences as it exists to them in real time, in contrast to my attempts to characterize their existence from what is learned from a textbook or in the classroom. I strongly believe this approach produces the most valuable fruit and manifests education as a practice of freedom as opposed to a practice of dominance.